In this video, the key concepts that we will examine are mutagens and mutations. How mutations in tumor suppressor genes and proto-oncogenes are linked to cancer. The difference between benign and malignant tumors. And finally, how we can calculate the mitotic index of a sample to better evaluate and differentiate between tumor types. The exploration in this video will offer insights into the origins of cancer and potential therapeutic approaches. Cancer is intimately tied to the cell cycle, as cancer is fundamentally a disease of uncontrolled cell proliferation. So let's look at how uncontrolled cell division occurs and the impact that it can have. The cell cycle is tightly regulated by checkpoints, and these ensure that cells only enter mitosis and divide when conditions are favorable, and DNA is not damaged. Tumor suppressor genes and proto-oncogenes work together to maintain normal cell function and help regulate the cell cycle. While they have opposing roles, their coordinated actions ensure that cell growth, division, and death occur in a controlled and balanced manner. Here's how they interact and the roles they play. Tumor suppressor genes encode proteins that slow down cell cycle progression and prevent uncontrolled cell division. They act as breaks on the cell cycle, ensuring that cells do not divide excessively. They are involved in repairing DNA damage and ensuring genetic stability. If DNA damage is detected, these genes can halt the cell cycle to allow for repair or initiate apoptosis or programmed cell death. And this is if the damage is irreparable. Proto-oncogenes encode proteins that promote cell cycle progression, cell growth, and division. They act as accelerators of the cell cycle, responding to growth signals and ensuring that cells divide when needed. They play key roles in transmitting signals from growth factors and other external stimuli to the cell's interior, influencing cellular responses such as proliferation and differentiation. The proteins may play a role in transcription or inhibit apoptosis or cell death. The coordinated action of proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes ensures a balance between cell proliferation and inhibition. Proto-oncogenes promote cell division in response to growth signals, while tumor suppressor genes inhibit division and ensure cells do not proliferate excessively. Proper regulation of the cell cycle ensures that cells replicate their DNA accurately and divide at the appropriate times. A mutation in these genes can offset the rate of cell division. Let's take a look at the effect of mutations in the tumor suppressor genes and proto-oncogenes. Mutations are changes in the DNA sequence of an organism. These changes can occur naturally or be induced by mutagens, which are agents that cause mutations. For example, chemical mutagens, such as those found in tobacco smoke, UV radiation, or asbestos, are known mutagens. When a mutation occurs in a gene that codes for a proto-oncogene, it can alter the protein produced by that gene. If the proto-oncogene is involved in regulating the cell cycle, any changes to it can impact its ability to perform this regulatory role. Mutations or inactivation of tumor suppressor genes can remove the regulatory breaks on the cell cycle, allowing cells to divide uncontrollably. This loss of function is a common feature in many cancers, as these genes normally act to inhibit excessive cell proliferation and ensure damaged cells do not continue to divide. As mentioned earlier, proto-oncogenes are normal genes and they help regulate cell growth and division. When these genes are mutated, they can become oncogenes. Oncogenes are mutated or abnormally expressed versions of proto-oncogenes, and they have the potential to drive cancer development. A mutation in a proto-oncogene can result in an oncogene that promotes uncontrolled cell division and this is by bypassing normal cell cycle checkpoints and regulatory mechanisms. When a proto-oncogene is mutated into an oncogene, the affected cell can progress through the cell cycle without proper regulation. This unregulated growth contributes to cancer development. As the cells divide, 
they pass the mutation to their daughter cells, leading to a growing population of cells with similar abnormalities. Over time, this accumulation of unregulated cells can form a tumour. A tumour is a mass of cells that proliferate uncontrollably. Here, we observe an example of a cell mass, or tumour. The early stages of tumour formation start when a primary tumour, which is the initial cluster of abnormal cells, begins to develop and becomes invasive. Cancerous cells can detach from the primary tumour and enter the bloodstream, or the lymphatic system. As these cells travel through the body, they may settle in distant tissues and organs, where they can continue to grow and form new tumours. We call these secondary tumours, or metastasis. This tumour is classified as malignant because it has the ability to metastasize. This means it can spread from one location to other parts of the body. This is a characteristic of cancer. In contrast, benign tumours do not metastasize. They grow locally and are usually encapsulated, which helps prevent them from invading surrounding tissues or spreading to other parts of the body. Although benign tumours can cause health issues, depending on their size or location, they are not cancerous and generally have a better prognosis than malignant tumours. Understanding the distinction between benign and malignant tumours is crucial because it influences treatment and overall prognosis. Benign tumours are often treated with surgical removal, while malignant tumours typically require more aggressive treatments, such as chemotherapy, radiation, or targeted therapies due to their potential to spread. To better evaluate and differentiate between tumour types, one useful measure is the mitotic index. This index indicates the proportion of cells undergoing mitosis in a sample of tissue. Malignant tumours generally exhibit a higher mitotic index when compared to normal tissue. This reflects their increased cell proliferation. The mitotic index is calculated by counting the number of cells in mitosis and dividing this by the total number of cells in the sample. In order to identify the cells which are undergoing mitosis, we can look for the key characteristics of the different stages of mitosis. For example, chromosomes aligned along the metaphase plate, as seen during metaphase, can be used to identify mitotic cells. By distinguishing between benign and malignant tumours, and assessing the mitotic index, healthcare providers can better diagnose the cancer, tailor treatment strategies, predict patient outcomes, and monitor treatment progress, ultimately improving patient management and care. You are expected to be able to calculate the mitotic index of a tissue sample. Remember, you can identify which cells are undergoing mitosis by looking for the characteristic appearance of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, as well as cytokinesis. Understanding the concepts shown in this video is important because they reveal how disruptions in the process of cell division can lead to cancer and why precise regulation is crucial for maintaining cellular health. The following were covered in this video. Proto-oncogenes and tumour suppressor genes play critical roles in regulating the cell cycle and maintaining normal cell growth. Mutagens can cause mutations in proto-oncogenes and tumour suppressor genes. Mutated proto-oncogenes can form oncogenes. Oncogenes and mutations in tumour suppressor genes may contribute to cancer by removing cell cycle controls. Tumours can be benign or malignant. The mitotic index of malignant tumours is higher than normal tissue. 